make sure I don't think I had that on. So hello, everybody. So glad to see you for our Landscape and Art Quilt Thursdays live. So we've got Kathleen here. We've got Marsha here. And it might just be an intimate little crowd here today. And that's okay. Kathleen Ziegler, Ziegler I loved seeing your quilts. And that great quilt, it's amazing. It is amazing. I loved it. The purples were so pretty. It was just amazing. So I'm working on this still. And I thought today we would finish up. But guess what? We're not going to finish up today, are we? Vicki Lemire, hello, hon. So today I'm going to show you how I do the trapunto for the back of it. And let's see. I think normally, well, I'll still do it my, I, I know how to do it my other way. Hold on. What I'm going to do, and this area is a little messy. Sorry, but I hope you've had a good week. This week has flown. February has just flown Bye. It's crazy. So anyway, I've got this nice polyester thick batting that I'm going to use to do the trapunto. Now, if y'all weren't here watching me so that I could be really cheap and <laughs> like I like to. Hi, Kim Burris is here. Oh, hello. Ooh, Ivalisa Bue. Oh, what a beautiful name. Hello, hon. So, and who else is here? Hello. That Ivalisa Bue, that sounds French to me. I wonder if it's French Canadian. I tell you. So, yes, and it's going to be gone in just a couple days, won't it? I think when's... Sunday is March 1st. So hello, everybody. So Iva, Ivalice, Ivalice, that's beautiful though. All right, so I'll go ahead and show you this first. We'll start off with something big. And like I said, if I wasn't doing this in front of you, I am so cheap that I would be trying to just cut the shapes and glue them in place. But since I'm doing this in front of you, I'm going to show you what is probably the best way to do it. Okay. So I've been putting some things on that I will show you. But for right now, what I'm going to do is I've just laid the batting in place. And I'm going to get rid of this extra because I can see me having problems with it and tearing it or cutting it or sewing it folded underneath. So, also, I don't know if y'all have one of these Fiskars scissor sharpeners. If you don't have one, I highly recommend them. I just went through my batch of scissors the other day and sharpened all of them. Really makes a difference. So, and they're not that expensive. Now, it's not as good. It's not as good as taking your scissors to a professional, but who can do that every month or so? And when I'm noticing I'm having trouble, I don't have time to go drop my scissors off for a week. I can just do them at home. And, you know, I sharpen my rotary blades, too. And I use the Collins. Let me show you. I use the Collins brand rotary cutter blade sharpener. Works really, really nice. Now, this one has a Dritz label in it. So maybe Dritz took over for Collins. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you ladies that that's a really good thing. So, 
All right, now I have cut the batting to fit the little quilt. Let me see if I can turn my camera and show you what I'm going to do next, okay? And this is so that if any of you are doing this with me, now let me try, I'm trying to turn this so that Mark always says, don't touch the camera, but it's hard for me not to. Okay, let me show you what I'm going to do. I think the beaks, the bills are all puffy enough, so I'm going to to leave them. But let me turn on my machine. All right. Let me show, oh, these new, Mark got me some new joints for where I need this for the camera, and it really is nice. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and leave, I'm going to leave the black thread in place because I had already done sewn with black thread so I could get a nice outline. So what I'm going to do is just, whoops, my thread, I think my thread came out. Yep, hold on. It is so good seeing all of you. There's Lime Zombie, which I always forget her real name. I'm such a visual person. I see that moniker and that's what i tend to say tanya hello honey boy we got a good crowd here all my favorite people all right let me see what i'm showing you is how to do trapunto with go on how to do trapunto on a quilt because i've had to do a lot of light sewing i had to get all my outline sewing done all of any thread painting get done before you do this okay be careful i'm going over the rhinestones i don't want to hit them okay now let me turn it so i put the i would put a piece of batting on the back of this and it's a polyester and it's probably at least a medium loft because I like it nice and puffy, okay? And even if later you want to quilt it with cotton, no problem. But to get a real nice puff, a real nice definition, to me, you can't beat polyester, okay? When I first started quilting, that's all we had. That's all we had at the store. I'll never forget the first time in one of my quilt groups a woman came in and said, look at this. And she had batting that had brown paper on the outside of it. And it was warm and natural. And I had never seen such a thing. Okay. Now I'm going to go back. Let me lift this up. So what I'm doing, I've got the batting on the back. And I'm just doing a regular stitch around the areas where I want the trapunto to be. And trapunto is just a process of puffing out, giving um, definition to some of your designs. And it's a great way to make something three-dimensional, make something feel like it's more real, um, to give it emphasis. It's a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm just going to go around their bodies, go around this leg, okay, and I don't have any fabric on the back of this, and I'll show you why in a minute. It's just the top and the batting, okay? I'll try to be quick so that you don't get too bored, but chat amongst yourselves while I'm working. And it looks like I made that one a little too far away from the leg. So I can always come back and do that again. And, in fact, I'm going to do it right now before I forget. And then I'll just take a seam ripper and pull it out where it's a little too far from the leg. Being fast sometimes is false economy, isn't it? Okay.
And you have to be careful with the batting underneath because it tends to want to get hung up on your feed dogs and or anything you have on the table. Okay. And I have too much on this table. Let me take off my quarter inch tape there so I can get to this better. Too much on the table. Let me see if I... No, okay. Hello, everyone. Okay. Now let me go down this way. And see, I'm just moving my, I've got my feed dog still down, but I'm just moving the fabric so that I don't have to keep turning every single time I go around a corner. Just be careful so you don't get it too hung up. All right. Okay, let's see. And then I'm going to keep sewing down this leg. I'm almost done. Okay. Now, go back up to the body here. Let me see. I want to make sure, okay, I need to do just a touch in here so I can cut this out later. Going around this leg because I'm going to need to cut this out to get good definition. All right, so now that I've done that, I can go back across to this body and then come back. All right. Everything is in my way tonight. Okay. I was upstairs today working on my feathers and the decorations for their tutus. And I'm going to need to talk to you about that, too, because I was trying to make a bunch of real, re more real, well, fabric feathers. And Mark said he liked the tool better. And he said, if I were you, I would just do less feathering and more tool. And I was kind of surprised. I, I'll talk to you all about that, too, and get y'all's opinion. And then tonight, don't let us forget to talk about our next project and what we're going to do with our next project. Okay, I'll put this up to here. I have to stop because my presser foot will get stuck on the bills because I used the Mod Podge on it and it made them a little sticky. I mean, they're not, I mean, you can feel them just slightly tacky. But for the presser foot, it wants to just stop dead on it. So, okay. So, I go up to that. Stop. Then, and I can't wait. I saw a photo. Hopefully, I saved it in her folder today. I was meaning to, but I saw where um, Jody evidently has hers almost done and i am so excited okay so let me stop there and then go here well actually let me go down here 
But I love getting your opinion on what I should do next with this quilt. So, I don't know if any of y'all are thinking about this coronavirus, but I'll tell you one thing I did today differently. I was going to have him pick up a couple of my medicines, and they always like to fill them too early or too soon before, before I've requested it. And so I had said, well, just pick up two of them. I don't need all three of them. But then after listening on the news to suggestions, because, you know, it is here. The coronavirus is here. At least 60 people in the U.S. have had it, not 15. That was not true. And the one person who hasn't been knowingly exposed to anybody who had the coronavirus and who had not gone to China, that's been discovered in California. But it seems like some people, some of our agencies have been kind of gutted and we don't have the protection that we're going to want. And it's going to take a minimum of a year to get a vaccine. But anyway... It worries me, but not too bad. I'm, I'm trying to be calm, but I mean, it's in like 80 countries, so it's going to happen here. But I heard him say, if you are on prescriptions, most of them or so many of them are made in China, Get make sure you have 90 days of your prescriptions because depending on how bad it, over, it is over in China, you know, the factories might not be able to put it out or who knows what. So today I called Mark and said, go ahead and pick up all three prescriptions. <laughs> so anyway, hello. Let me see. Oh, Bonnie is here. Hello, sweetheart. Diane 57. Yeah, there's no such thing as late here. Because, hi, Tiffany, because we're y'all are here when you get here. The thing about quilting, this is all fun and games. And so don't stress over this. There are enough other things to stress about in life. I'm just glad you're here. All right. So now what I just did, if you came in while I was doing this, you were thinking, what is she doing? <laughs> but what I want to show you is I took and put the batting on the back and then from the front I stitched around what I wanted to have as trapunto. Now I go back and let me show you. Now I go back and cut away the extra. Now see when I go to quilt this, which I won't get to till next time, but when I go to quilt this I will put another piece of batting around the entire, on the entire bottom in between the backing fabric and the, um, okay, let me see. Yeah, I'm trying to remember which way does this go? This is just the easiest way. And I was telling them if it had just been me sitting here, I would have cut out batting in the shape of the necks and in the shape of their bodies done it the cheapo way because I hate to waste batting and but with y'all here I thought I'd show you the better way so anyway but if you if you are on medications and you're due to get it go ahead and get it sooner than later just in case but um Anyway, and don't shake hands anymore. You can they said hugging is better than shaking hands. Well, I'm a hugger, so that's good. <laughs> so anyway, what I'm doing, I don't want any more batting under the bills. And in fact, I'm gonna turn on the iron just a little bit. I noticed the bills, the more they dry, the more they're kind of drawing up a little. And you know, this was an experiment anyway of how can I make a vinyl looking bill, you know, something a little more realistic. But so now I'm just cutting around where I sewed. I'm cutting out everything that is not them or their body. That's not a flamingo or their body. I'm cutting away. And that way, later, when I do put my batting over it and my backing and quilt it, it'll be extra puffy, okay? 
And I'll show you that in just a minute. It's already showing the puffiness. Now I'm having to be very careful that I don't cut through to the front of this quilt because that's a lot of time and effort I put into this. Um, I'm having a hot flash, so let me turn on my fan just a moment. I just love these hot flashes. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it right up here so I can see it, feel it real good. <sighs> Anyway, okay, there we go, go right up here, making sure, like I said, keep checking where your scissors are so you don't cut through the quilt, that would break your heart, that would be very hard to fix, I would fix it, you know me, I'm not going to start over again, but that would be hard to fix. Okay, cutting around their scrawny little legs. Okay. Oh, that's a foot. Okay. <laughs> I thought that should have come off. And I was like, what's wrong with that? That's one of their feet. So how have y'all been this week? I can't believe that February is almost done. Goodness gracious. And, you know, I wanted to get my tiger quilt done so I could maybe enter it in a show. I haven't even worked on it. I've been working on this one. But I said, the show I want to enter in, I'd have to have it done by the end of March. So I'm going to be a busy girl in March. I always said I would never enter a, a quilt in a show, and I meant it. But I tell you what, after doing it last year, now I'm hooked. So I'd like to do it again. I'm trying to do a good job on this. I'm not moving through this quite as quickly because I may just want to enter this. Y'all have been urging me on. Now you got me thinking about it. All right. I am done cutting this out. And let me show you how it's already puffing up the body. See how the body is, is puffing? Look at the, the head. Look at the head's already trying to puff up a little bit. So... To me, that's important. It gives, it gives a quilt definition, personality, and it, it just, just makes it come alive a little more. And see, normally I would hate wasting that. But you know what? I'll use it for stuffing. All right. So let me show you what I've got and get some advice from you. Because Mark came home and I was working on these feathers. See my feathers I was working on? And that's LeMay that I've been thread painting. And I don't know if y'all remember, but about two, three months ago, three months ago, I ordered, put in an order from Connecting Threads. And if you had, if you spent at least $75, they gave you uh, eight or 10 pack of variegated thread. This has been wonderful for my feathers because look, it gives them, whoops, there, gives them depth with the variegation. See that? So I was working on the feathers, but then Mark said, Deb, I kind of like all of this and the tool and the yarn, the eyelash yarns. See on, under here, I put a lot of eyelash yarns and tool. And under here, it's eyelash yarn and tool. So now, let me hold it back up here from a little bit of a distance so you can see it. But so now I'm confused. He said, well, Deb, I like that they would be wearing a nice, fluffy, he said, like in the, in the little painting you did on the wall. He said, those tutus are so pretty. And I kind of, I thought you'd want to do that on them. So let me screen for, or move forward here and see what y'all have to say about it. Okay. What is going on? Let me hold it up again. Okay. And what I want you to do is concentrate on the areas. 
See, these only have a couple feathers. I was going to put a whole mess of them on there and have this stuff underneath. And this is some netting, and I've got tool, and I've got yarn. But he says he'd like more tool and yarn. Um, I wanted to see what y'all thought. He, he likes the way this looks better than this is going to look with the layers of feathers. So I wanted to see what y'all thought. So, that would be good for y'all. And then don't forget, I've got the little feather thing to put at their necklace. If I put more feathers on it, it would cover up the body. Good point. Then he said, well, what would it, what would it look like if you put the feathers and put the tool over it? You like the fluffy, feathery look underneath of it. Okay. All right. Hold on just a second. I want to grab something. Hold on just a second, guys. Okay, I'm back. I wanted to go get some of my Sculpey, my polymer clay, Sculpey, Pop Fimo. Hello, Brenda. How are you, sweetie? Because I haven't made their eyes yet, so I thought I'll show you how I make the eyes. Now, this is a very bright, bright, bright yellow. This is the hardest part right here, is conditioning the clay. So, I took a huck, and right now it's not in very good condition. I think what happens when you keep clay, the oils and stuff just redistribute in the clay, and it tends to make it, in fact, let me show you, when I, I'll point this down here. Now, this clay is a, and this is Fimo, Fimo, and I've got, you know, different kinds. I've got the Cato clay, Fimo, Sculpey, and I've never used them as much as I should, but I, there's always hope. But the, the main thing is you have to condition it, because see how it breaks up? And condition just means you keep, you warm it up a little. You mush it, and, okay, and I want to get some black out of this bag, because you know there's got a little center on his eye, too. Okay, this must be Sculpey, because this is already softer. Now, one thing I have to do, wipe my hands good between working on this but I think I've shown you before let me see if they're in here I've I think I've shown you that some of you this already but I made a Christmas quilt and it needed to have okay Tiffany it I needed to have a bunch of buttons that look like holly berries and so what, instead of going out and trying to buy them, I made them. And see how, whoops, I put a hole in the back. And you just do that with a fine awl, A-W-L, awl, awl, I can't pronounce that quite right. And then I put a little um, floor polish on them as, as a, to make them shine. Now I used these on my quilt and it worked really well. And then another time I made a quilt with watermelon blocks and I wanted watermelon seed buttons, but they were so expensive and hard to come by. So I just took my, 
my clay again and made cute um ah, boy conditioning is a bummer but anyway okay so while i'm talking i'll bring it back up and talk to you and keep doing what i'm doing and my my right arm right here is hurting me it's not carpal tunnel it's been hurting me but i made homemade bread last night i'm not sure kneading was what my wrist needed but it's not carpal tunnel it's down from that and it's been giving me a fit so i've been taking advil which always helps finger aerobics <laughs> i love it i love it okay <laughs> I, I like lime. I like how you said to put the, the sculpey under your arm and sit on it. But it's finally, I'm getting it. I think what happens is, like I said before, the, the oils and the clay maybe pull apart or something. All right. I'm cooled off now. I'm done with the hot flash for the moment. But give me a few minutes. I'll have another one. <laughs> My private summer moment. So, okay, so now I've conditioned it. So what I'm going to do, I only need three of them. No sense spending the gas to go out looking for three buttons because I couldn't find, I thought I'd have some at home, but all of mine have four holes in them and that's not what I want. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look, look at this little flamingo and figure out what size to make this eye. Now, from my experience, I don't think these um, shrink up or something much. That's not a problem. <laughs> Clay Botox, huh? Okay. That's a little too big. I think he, he, he might look like he's got Graves' disease, which makes your eyes bug out. So let me try this again. Okay. I want them just slightly rounded. And I think I'm going to take some black woolly yarn to do around their eyes to make it look like a little bit of a fluffy eyelid. So that's still a little too, that's still a little too high. So I need to take out some more of this. Okay. Y'all have to come back Sunday. I got a vid new video or two for about Russell. Two videos, I think. So I can't wait to show them to you. All right. So I just look at this here. Because I'm thinking I can either make it a button and sew it on. Or I can make it a solid and then glue it on. And I don't know if it would be better to use hot glue or if it would be better to use aha what do you think do you think that would work i think that's a good one so now i'll bring it down here and if i make them all about that size i think i've got a pretty good eyeball and it's important to me to have, oh, thank you, Diane57. Hello, sweetie. Linda Price is back. I'm so tickled. But anyway, do you see how easy it is to do little stuff like this? And I love adding Sculpey clay and beads or anything. I've put lichen, tree lichen on a quilt before. And I, you know, the thing, the thing that's beautiful about fiber art quilts is the sky's the limit. Do what you think. You know that the quilt I had in the show last year in Lancaster had real chicken feathers. It was from my rooster. And uh, so I did some sew on. I did some embroidery feathers, feathering, and then did use some real feathers for the tail. And I had a great time with that. Okay, so here are two eyes. Now, what I will do is take a little piece of cotton batting, not polyester, but a little scrap of cotton batting, and lay it on the metal pan for the toaster oven. 
and I will bake these at 265 degrees for 30 minutes, the package says. And I do it in a toaster oven so that I can get adequate ventilation. And how easy is this to do? So, you know, you can have all, a lot more than just fabric in your quilting toolkit. And uh, it all works. It all works. So, one more iris for the eye. I think I'm going to... I'm going to shrink this one up just a little bit. So when I go up tonight, after doing this, I will put these in my toaster oven and on a piece of batting soap. Because if you put it on like aluminum foil, it'll get a shiny spot. So I put it on batting or you can put them on a clear ceramic um, tile. So there are my three eyeballs. That wasn't hard, was it? And that'll give them some real personality. So before I glue them on permanently, I've got to do some outlining. And I'm thinking somebody mentioned about them having um, eyelashes. So I'm going to want to do some thread painted eyelashes. So now let me move these out of the way. I'll show them to you one more time. Isn't that fun? That's how easy this all is. That's why I tell you ladies, ladies play and have fun. There is nothing serious. There's plenty of other things to be serious in this life about, but this is all fun. And you know what? I have loved seeing the things that you have sent me and you show me that you can have a lot of fun. So very good. Okay, so that's the eyes. Now I'll come in closer and let you see what I've got these skirts made out of. All right. So I found some of this. This is really pretty. And I don't, somebody had it in their scrap pile and gave it away. And I took it. Then here is the tool and eyelash yarn that's then been laid down. And I was thinking making a whole bunch of more feathers, but having little peekaboo areas so you could see through it. But now, and you know, oh, and I want to put some Bonnie. Bonnie gave me those wonderful feathers. And so I was all, I was going to take and try to hot glue those, you know. I, I, maybe I'm doing too much. I don't know. <laughs> well, I was telling Mark while I was watching the Washington, the History Channel Washington series they recently had. When I was in fourth grade, I took, a, uh, my parents got me five pounds of clay and I made a bust of George Washington. And darn it, if it didn't look like him, it was scary. <laughs> my parents must have thought, this little girl's a freak. <laughs> but anyway, so with this one, I tried different things. This is the darker eyelash yarn. And I tried making what looked like a feather shape with the um, a feather shape with the netting, the tool, and then sewing the yarn on that. And eh, I don't know. And these were the, but then then I put some of the netting over that. But you can see it's tool eyelash yarn. I love this eyelash yarn. Maybe I should put more of this in. Yeah, good, good thought, Kathleen. And then these are the feathers that I originally did. But right now they look like they might have mange. So I've got to make a decision. It's like, oh, they're losing their feathers. And then here is the last one. And here's that netting. And then here is the tool and a dark. I found a dark uh, burgundy red. I, uh, it's not as, th as thick of an eyelash yarn, but it still is one. And I put that there, and then I've got this netting on here. So one of my problems is to put the netting on, if I sew it, it mashes it down. You can see when I sewed over top to put these, kind of mashed it down. So I, I don't know. This is why I'm glad to be able to come to y'all tonight and say, Tell me what to do, please. But now, see, I put trapunto. I put 
batting under their legs. So once this is all quilted down, which I'll do next week. Um, now, of course, you know, I'm going to have to pull out some of the stitching, but that's not a problem. But anyway, with all the trapunto, it's going to look right here. See how the neck puffs up? So that's why I love doing trapunto. It just gives a lot of definition. And I think I showed y'all last week. I believe, did I show? No, wait a minute. Did I do these on Saturday? Uh, the only thing I don't like is see how they're starting to crinkle up a little bit. I may have to go in from behind and cut through the fabric and put a little more stuffing in there. Because I don't like them creasing up. But what's probably happening is they're drying more and more. And as they dry, they're shrinking. Maybe I'll have to cut them off and re-sew them. Maybe that's what I'll do. But this was just white fabric that I painted three coats of Mod Podge, Mod Podge fabric um, stuff on them. And then put on the tutu after the quilting. Ah, oh, you don't like the feathers. Oh, I'm glad you told me, Bonnie, because that's Mark didn't like them either. That bothered him. Okay, they don't play nice with the tool. Good point. Okay, that's good to know because they take a long time. And if I don't have to do a bunch more, I'll be real happy. <laughs> but anyway, but I did three layers of Mod Podge for fabric on top of this fabric then I took and painted them with my acrylic paints then I put another layer of Mod Podge fabric on top so that's what and then I stuffed underneath of them I had to sew them on by hand and uh, that, that was time you remember my little painting I did I did all that painting I did this all with ink tints on just a piece of muslin I think it came out pretty good here's my other bill so I'll just have to watch these bills. And I still had wanted to put a, a little tiny flamingo putting on, you know, stretching her leg, little skinny leg up on the bar. But I haven't done that yet. I was busy today trying to do these feathers that are a lot of work. <laughs> so I'm glad y'all are giving me hints then. And I like the idea, Diane57, I love the idea of putting the tutu on after the quilting. That way it won't get, you know, smashed down. Okay, so Diane57 says, yes, they're going to need the eye makeup of a ballerina. Okay, I can do that. And I was thinking if I sew around the eye, because I noticed in pictures, they kind of had like a little black fur around their eye. So I thought if I sew it with woolly yarn, it'll give a little definition. And then I'll do some eyelashes. See I, how I already drew them in? And then I will take either hot glue or a fabric, permanent fabric glue and glue those eyes in place. Okay, okay. So any other suggestions you have? And let me show you, while I've got this up close, let me show you one of the eyes put in place. And see, it'll look really good once I've done the little puffy woolly yarn around it. It'll make it seem like it's more set in. So I'm kind of, I guess what I'm doing is doing some things realistic, like the bills and the eyes and stuff. And then having fun and fantasy with their outfits. I like it too. And I'm keeping their necks kind of plain, you know, their heads kind of plain. And then I'll go to town with their bodies. I, I think this is great. Now let me show you. This is one of the eyelash yarns. And if you know of any quilters, ask them if they have any scraps and bits that they don't want. And here is the medium color eyelash yarn. And 
here's the light color eyelash yarn. So I've got the three colors for the three birds. Then Miss Bonnie sent me this wonderful pink feather boa. And I can use a lot of those. And then I've got this light pink netting. And I've got this netting. So, what do you think? You threw yourself out and land. Oh, no. Ouch. That would hurt. Okay. All right, good. Well, I think you all have given me some good direction. And honestly, it's so much easier than thread painting those feathers. Because that was a lot of work. So, I've got, I'll just keep using all of these. And let the realistic feathers go the way of the dinosaur. <laughs> All right. Let me... Um, let me come right back with something. Hold on a second. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right there. No. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is hang this up so you can look at it and give me more hints. Okay, put it back here. All right, let me turn you all around. I want to make sure you can still see it. Whoops, let me see. I think you're right too, Bonnie. You know, now that I'm seeing it a little further away, I think Bonnie's right because the feathers just kind of lay there funny. And I, I, do, I think you're right. I think Mark and you, all of y'all that said, do, two, do two twos out of the netting and the yarns and all that. <laughs> And um, that, that does, that sounds so much better and a whole lot easier. Sometimes I feel like that to make an art quilt, I've got to throw everything at it. No, I don't. No, I don't. So editing is very important. All right. That is very, very good. All right. So we're doing well. So just remember, I will go upstairs and bake the eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> and just do bake them at what your clay says. I don't put them in my regular oven because I need good ventilation and you're not supposed to bake them on anything that you would use for food. Okay? But otherwise, it's pretty good. And you know, now since I'm using all the tool and stuff, if I wanted to put a few like sprinkle glue, some um, sequins or something, I could. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, they're a little too overwhelming. That's what Mark said. He said they're too big. <laughs> so I love what you said. It's going to make it so much easier. I'm so thrilled. So now that's what's been taking me so long. And I knew I'm not going to be able to have this done for them to, to, tonight. So now let's talk about ideas for what we want to do for our next quilt because this will be done now next week I'll have this done and so if we get this done we've had a couple ideas and let's say this done we've had a couple ideas and let's say window open and a big fan on because you don't want to breathe those fumes now the, the little bit that I use polymer clay, I'm not really worried. And plus, I'm almost 64 years old. How much longer did I think I was going to be around anyway? <laughs> so, here we go. 
I'm going to show you a couple ideas because um, we've had somebody mention a log cabin. We've had somebody mention um, Eye of Horus, which I had to look up. I was like, what's that? And Mark, but anyway, he's so smart. So let's see here. Under the sea. Oh, Kathleen. Oh, Kathleen. That. I've been meaning to do that for years. Ooh. Bake your eyeballs. <laughs> Fry your eyeballs. <laughs> so, okay. And then don't forget, if you do the, the polymer clay, you can, you know, get all this micro fine uh wet dry sandpaper and all that i i just put a little rub a little finger of floor polish on it and call it good so <laughs> i'm not going to do all this you know different stages of grinding it down no, 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 no. that's that's work i'm playing i'm playing uh, mark's middle brother was so funny when he was little his mother had called him and said i need you to come do you know his chore he said Mom, imagine Patricia Fry is here. Woo, yay. Okay, so now let me show you a couple pictures. But Kathleen got me with this undersea. So let me show you real quick. Whoops. I just minimized y'all. Oh, there you, you're back. Okay. Let me see if I can find them. Oh, I want to show y'all this. I found this on an old email from the quilt show. And oh my gosh, it was so beautiful. And while we're talking about art quilts, I thought hopefully there's not going to be any shine. Come on, let's show it. Come on. Come on, let's show it. Let me try it again, ladies. Let me try it again. Look at this quilt. Now, let me, I want to make it bigger. Look at this quilt. Is that the most extraordinary thing? I love it. It's a stargazer lily. And she said the hardest part was trying to get the roughly look of the little seed uh, pollen stamens. But is that the most beautiful thing? It's hard to believe that's just fabric that she did. So that'll get you excited. All right. Now, let me now go and find pictures... I have a folder I've started to try to put a lot of ideas because I really love coming up with ideas with you. So, I saw this picture on my PBS station at the end, and I thought, oh, that's pretty. I want to make sure it doesn't have any lights um, shining on it. So that I thought was pretty. And then I know Cheryl Lemon talked about a log cabin. And then I don't know if we talked about anything else. But um, let me turn this back around. I want to look at you ladies for a minute. Um, hold on one second. I'm thinking about this undersea thing. Really thinking about that. And... Okay, I'm not sure if I have Jody's the right picture for Jody, so we will come back to it. Ladies, what do you think about us doing an under the sea? When she said that, I got so excited. What do you think? Could we agree to that? Oh, thank you, Diane57. You're so sweet. Oh, 
I love that, Kim. Exactly. Yeah, I can't die because I've got too much fabric to finish doing. <laughs> so, so what do you think? Can y'all get behind and under the sea? And I'll, I'll, let me tell you some things to be looking for. Be looking for, this was one of those things you wash with in the shower. You can go to the dollar store and find these. And they have different colors. This could be great anemone for under the sea. You can harvest your onion bag netting for sea plants. Um, could it have a manger in it, please? What's a manger? Oh, I'm so tickled with your cottage, Bonnie. Oh, my gosh, it's going to be wonderful. And you got a front porch. I love front porches. So that's exciting. That's exciting. Yes, you go pack because Bonnie's got a lot of fun things ahead for her. We cannot wait. So, but be collecting onion netting bags, hair nets, any kinds of little tool or anything like that um look around for buttons buttons that have fish you know buttons of different fish and things uh get yourself some poly clay start making some fish from that the coral the fish yes i mean you can do anything i have the eyelash yarn in greens and browns and under underwater colors. In fact, some of these pinks would work too because some of the exotic plants underneath. So start get your get a folder on your computer and start typing in underwater scenes. Type in underwater scene quilts or or ocean quilts. And just start getting your mind going. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Honestly, you don't. You really don't. Just look for different things. If you've got any paper, you can run uh, fabric, that fabric that you can run through a paper. You could print out different kinds of fish, cut it out, and applique it on. And I will bring down my beach quilt that has gobs, dozens of buttons and appliques and all this fun stuff that I put. So let's start looking for this. And I tell you what, if you start participating and you would like some of my Angelina fibers, I can do that because all I have to do is use an envelope and a stamp because I could mail you different color Angelina fibers. So I will bring that down next week so we can look at it. And if you're willing to actually work on this quilt, I will I, I want to see progress first. I will send you out an envelope with beautiful Angelina fat. Uh, uh, you know, they're fibers and they press you. you I use, a, use an iron safe sheet, you know, or wax paper and you press them. That would look beautiful. So seahorses, yes. And, you know, look through your stash. Do you have any old seahorses that came... There were appliques that were you were supposed to put on a child's outfit years ago. Whatever. This is going to be fun. So look for unusual yarns. All like that. And oh my gosh, we can make a sea turtle. Um, Bonnie made a beautiful sea turtle quilt. So let's do it. And if you would like, join our group and I'll put... Anything I can find on our group to give you more ideas, okay? Crabs. Oh, got to have blue crabs. I mean, I lived in Maryland and Virginia my whole life until I moved to North Carolina, and you get blue crabs here too. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. And maybe we could take, like, you know, twist ties, take the wire and try to make, like, a crab pot under the water. I mean, wait, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. So start doing your research. Thank you, Kathleen. Oh, it, 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 as soon as you said it, it caught me. I thought, wow. But, I mean, you know, I had this wire mesh ribbon. I could paint this and make it into like a lobster trap or a crab trap. See, I mean, look at everything around your house with a different eye and think, 
what could I turn that into? This is going to be fun. So if you would like to join our group where I'll be sharing some of my ideas, send me an email to our time to quilt at TWC. Oops. Hold on. Let me. Our time to stopped. Okay. Quilt at TWC. Whoops. <laughs> C dot no. <laughs> dot com okay if you send me an email to our time to quilt dot at twc dot com i am very good at making sure to invite you just ask kim didn't i do good job kim cheryl lemon is here hi sweetheart hi so cheryl we'll keep your log cabin on the list i promise but it's just got me so excited, especially with spring coming soon. Nana by the Gulf. Oh, she can think of plenty of ideas to do an unwater, underwater scene. So if you aren't a member of our group, send me an email and I'll invite you. And that way we can share ideas and stuff. And, uh, oh, this is wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, everybody. Um, oh, a manatee. Oh, they're so darling. They're so darling. Okay, well, that's it for this week. Now I'm leaving you with a lot of work to do. Get your imaginations in gear and just blame Kathleen. <laughs> and this is exciting. And, you know, I was just trying to think. I wonder if I have any little buttons or something I could share for you with y'all, too. So be thinking about it, all of you. We're going to have fun. And next week, we'll do the final bit of the quilting on this. I'll show you how I do a frame border for it. And then the next week after that, let's go underwater. All right. Oh, how about an underwater shipwreck? Boy, we're coming up with some great ideas, aren't we? Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Take good care. Have a great week. I'm going to go rest my hand a little bit. It hurts. <laughs> so y'all take good care. Thank you for joining me. As always, it was so much fun. Y'all are doll babies. Okay. Take good care. I'll see you. I hope you join our group. And let's get the ideas flowing about our new undersea art quilt. All right. Take care. Bye, Patricia. Thank you so much, Kathleen. So good seeing you again, Lime and Kim, and oh my gosh, so many wonderful people. I love you all. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.